So I'm building a full stack project here in Go and I really wanted to build a feature switch for this application, right? So uh, within this application, there's a series of features that I would like to be able to disable and enable, right? And you'll, you'll typically see this in, on your bigger projects. Maybe you've done this at work before where you want to release a feature to a small subset of users or you just want the ability to turn on and off features, right? And that's exactly what I've built for this uh, application. I've only actually built the part of dynamically turning off an entire feature for everyone uh, and it's quite powerful and it's quite simple and it's all in Go. Um, so I'm going to go over that implementation right now. So um, this is a project which is basically a recruitment platform for uh, recruiters to hire Golang engineers, right? And currently the main feature I've been working on is the ability to create a profile. So if I go and get started and then if we sign up, with an email address uh, like so uh, and let's not save that one and if I go to the dashboard now that should probably redirect you to the dashboard actually but hey that's fine you'll notice here that there is a create dashboard form right and this you everyone will see if you haven't got a profile you'll get this screen right that'll come up on your page and Obviously, you could do, as a developer, I could go and comment out that code or I could go remove that code from the build, whatever, right? But what if you're there's a bug or you want to release it, but due to something else, you have another feature that needs to go out first or something, you want to be able to deploy it but not have that feature on display to users, right? So that's what I built, right? So again, this is a JSON feature toggle file and quite simply, it's quite bare bones at the moment where it's just a feature name and then a Boolean true or false further to enable it. Now you'll notice in my logs here on the application that every X amount of seconds it goes to attempt to load a feature toggle config and it then goes and reloads that feature toggle config, right? So uh, I've wrote a little package here to wrap this up nicely. So I have a feature toggler and that is the struct here that embeds a few fields. So it, it embeds the features themselves. So that's basically a config of the features available in the system that need to be toggled on or off. And obviously I've got a mutex to make sure I can do that concurrently. And I've got a, a config for the feature toggler, such as the file location of where the feature toggle file is stored. Um, and also a reload interval and how often I want to be able to go and look at that file, right, and check it. So the first thing I do when calling new is pre-populate the features, because obviously it's not going to be on the interval at first, right. I want to just go and get the available features at runtime when the program is first spinning up. Uh, and then I've obviously got some helpers here to go and get features since features is a private field on the struct. Uh, and then I've got the actual code to go and load from file, which again, really simple. It's the file location and I'll just do a simple os.read file. Uh, and then here's where it gets a bit more interesting, um, slightly more interesting. Uh, it writes to a channel here, right? So this version here writes from a channel. Uh, and it just writes the context to this features channel. And this bit here is the actual bit that I spin up in a go routine to go and watch the file. So it's quite simple, it's just a for loop here uh, with a select, so obviously if the context is finished it cancels and if not, uh, this channel here unblocks, so this after channel, after the duration comes in, uh, you'll hit in this case here, so again after, you know, say I set this to 20 seconds, after 20 seconds it will, this channel will unblock and uh, it will go into this case, or it will block in that case even, and it will write from, it will read from that file uh, and it will write, well in this function, it writes to the channel uh, and that's how the rest of the application uh, is notified that a feature has been changed, right? This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org so if you want to look, continue to learn computer science subjects such as the one that I cover on this channel on this video that you're watching right now definitely check out Brilliant.org it is a fun and interactive way with thousands of lessons from basics to advanced topics and they add new lessons every month so whatever your skill level is brilliant customizes content to fit your needs and lets you solve problems at your own pace so for example recently i've been following this algorithms course now i personally find that watching videos on algorithms or just written content for me is a slightly harder slightly harder to understand so following it in an interactive fun way like this one here uh, for me really helps me out and i think that i actually get my gets my own brain thinking uh, on these problems which in return for me as a problem solver I tend to learn more. Uh, it doesn't cost thousands of dollars and it doesn't take years and years of schooling and it's actually free and easy. So if you guys want to check it out I'll leave a link down below and also you can go to brilliant.org slash codes for 20% off the annual plan for the first 200 subscribers and you can start a free 30 day free trial 
uh, and get a whole month or a whole 30 days for free to try out the platform as well. So if I go to main.go and we you firstly notice here that the feature toggle file is just written into the application with a flag um, so that's just set on this ops struct here which has kind of some generic options that this application has uh, and then further down uh, this is where you'll see the actual feature toggle stuff itself right so my kind of application runs from this API struct uh, so you'll notice I pass in the features here uh, but you also notice down here is where I spin up the routine to go and watch the config file. So that will just be running on the feature toggle interval here. You could probably define that as an environment variable or you can go and build some fancy UI to be able to switch features on and off and maybe control it from there as well. Uh, and then that this is just the initialization of the feature toggles. Um, and then obviously as you can see here, this consumer routine just sits here spinning and waits for uh, the feature channel uh, the feature toggle channel to be written to and then when it's when it's got a value in the channel since it's unbuffered uh, it will just go and we will call the update features function on the API struct uh, and that is pretty much it in terms of setting the features so then in the API uh, itself they're obviously available to my handlers so you'll notice here on my handlers um, I believe it's embedded in here it's actually embedded I remember now in the view on each handler because um, each handler gets a view and on the view you'll see here are all of the features and then that way quite easily if I head to the form which is uh, partials uh, create engineer form here you'll notice that oh, that's actually the wrong part it's actually the dashboard you'll notice here it's wrapped right so it will only render the actual form here if the features create profile is actually true and again when the application is running uh, this file will still be watched so you know it could be live and I could go and change the, that to false so if I do that now for example set this to false you'll notice that if we wait the duration which I think was 20 seconds a bit long um, but if you wait the 20 seconds yep so you can see here the it's successfully re reloaded and if I refresh again, you'll now see the form has disappeared from the application. Um, so that's it. That is feature toggles in Golang. It's a simple implementation. Obviously, you could go away and you can extend this. You could write a UI and enable and disable features from a UI. You could store your features in a database. So again, it could be accessible from a user interface. Uh, or you could just do what I've got at the moment, which is a bare bones JSON file that will go and disable and enable features. Uh, but hopefully you've got some value from this. Maybe if you're building something similar, this will give you some rough idea on how you can do so. Uh, and as always, drop a like if this video has helped in any way, shape or form. And I'll see you in the next one.